Here's where we ended part three of this four part tutorial. There's something that I actually forgot to show you, and that is how to get these bikes to randomly park on the opposite side of the bike rack. But that's actually okay. It'll work well to show you a quick review of the ran between function. We'll do a simple edit to the my bike wrote Z formula. We're going to add 180, and then we're going to multiply that 180 by this ran between 0 and 1. This ran between function has an equal chance of returning either a 0 or a 1, which is in turn multiplied by 180, which of course is in turn added to the result of that function. Hit enter to see the result. Remember that you can manually redraw a dynamic component by right-clicking on it, hovering over dynamic components, and selecting redraw. Now we will move on to the interact tool and make it so it hides the individual bikes. Now if you try to use it right away, you'll get the little buster symbol telling you that it doesn't do anything. The interact tool is tied directly to the onClick attribute, so let's go ahead and add that. Because we'll be dealing with hiding and unhiding things, let's also add the hidden attribute. The hidden attribute value field wants one of two things, false, which it defaults to, or true. If I put this in and hit enter, all the bikes will become hidden. It will also take either a 0 or a 1, 1 being true and a 0 being false. Here's a little tip that I've discovered about the value for the hidden attribute. If it equals 0 or any negative number, it'll equal false. If it equals any positive number, it equals true. In the onClick attribute value field, enter this function, set. Inside its parentheses, we're going to put hidden, and hidden needs to be inside double quotes. After that, put a comma, and we'll use another function, the not function. Inside its parentheses, we'll put hidden. Now there's a few things to notice here. The onClick attribute wants a behavior, not a formula. That's why we don't have an equal sign to start this. Next, because we're telling an attribute to do something and not necessarily that attribute's value to do something, the attribute is in double quotes here. The not function is actually pretty cool. It's always going to be equal to the opposite of whatever hidden is set to. Hit enter to register that attribute value. Now if you once again grab the interact tool, hover over a bike, notice you don't get the buster symbol and the finger lights up letting you know that it's going to do something. Click on a few bikes. If you turn on hidden geometry from the view menu option and click on those same bikes, they'll unhide. This functionality is pretty cool, but there's something you need to be aware of. If you try to interact with the original bike, which is right here, for whatever reason, it has the ability to control the hidden attribute of all the copies generated from it. I'll show you a workaround for that issue. In the my bike component copies attribute value, edit that, and let's remove that minus one at the end. Notice that gives us one extra bike just beyond the last rack. What we're effectively going to do is remove the original bike 
and then move that extra bike into its position. We'll deal with removing the original bike first. We're not going to really get rid of it. We're just going to make it really, really tiny and put it right down here. We'll accomplish that with the help of the sine function. This function will give us one of three values. If the number inside of it is negative, it will return a negative one. If it's a zero, it gives us a zero. And if it's any positive number, it'll give us a one. We're going to edit each of the my bike size attributes. Let's start with the Len X. If you still have the double quote at the end of that value to indicate inches, you'll want to delete it. It'll still calculate as inches. Let's multiply the size attribute by sine. And inside of sine, let's put copy. Now remember that copy is a variable associated with each copy in a dynamic component, including the original. For the original, it's equal to zero. For each successive copy, it's equal to the number of that copy. So when used in conjunction with the sine function, that's going to give us a zero for the first bike and a one for each successive copy. So in other words, the Linux value for the original copy is going to equal zero. But for every successive copy, it'll remain the desired size because it's being multiplied by one. Hit enter to register that formula change. Let's do the same thing for the len y and len z attribute values. Can you still see the original bike? It's right there. To further get it out of the way, let's edit the my bike x and y position attributes in the same way that we edited the size attributes. To maintain the order of these existing mathematical operations, I'm going to put this function in parentheses and then multiply that by sine copy. In the y formula, I can just multiply that by sine copy. Now that the first bike is out of the way, all that's left to do is to create a multiplier to determine if any given copy happens to be the last copy, and then apply that multiplier to the x position formula. Let's create a custom attribute and call it if last. In this formula, we're going to reference the copies attribute, but there's something you should know before we do. The number displayed is an integer, but the actual value of copies is not necessarily an integer. It just rounds down because it doesn't make sense to have half of a copy. You can see that if you reference the attribute directly. Whenever referencing the copies attribute, it's a good idea to put it inside of the floor function. The floor function will round down to the nearest integer. Next, let's put that floor function inside of an if function. Our if conditional will be if floor copies is equal to copy return zero, otherwise return one. That attribute value is now going to equal one for all of the bikes except for the last copy, in which case it's zero. In the x formula, we'll use that multiplier, but just on this part here, because we still want that first bike to be offset 20.4 inches from the edge.
At this point, the dynamic component is exactly the same as the one that I showed you to start the tutorial. Scaling it makes the parts repeat in position with controlled randomness. You can use the interact tool to clean it up by hiding certain bikes, and you can make copies that are unique. I hope this tutorial was helpful. For more tutorials and to see what Concept3D has been up to, please visit our blog at blog.concept3d.com. If you have any general questions, please send them to info at concept3d.com. If you have any comments, questions, or requests for me, drop me a line at matt.chambers at concept3d.com.